Today we're going to be taking a look at performance for the GTX 1080 Ti on AMD Ryzen. Over the course of about the last month, those are probably the two biggest launches that we have seen from AMD and Nvidia with AMD pushing out the Ryzen 7 series of CPUs and we are expecting to see the Ryzen 5 CPUs sometime in the very near future and I will definitely have content for you guys surrounding those Ryzen 5 processors. And then for Nvidia, the GTX 1080 Ti was their biggest recent release so I figured what better way to test these technologies to go ahead and combine them into one system and do some testing for you. And we are going to be taking a look at that testing up against an X99 build, my Black Mesa system which has the i7 6800K, which I keep at 4.3 gigahertz. The 1800X here, in case you missed my build video on my Better Red build, I keep my 1800X at 4 gigahertz. So both of these CPUs were overclocked to the highest that I was able to take them and keep them stable for gaming and endurance runs on things like Ida64. So that was my testing me methodology as far as the CPUs are concerned. For the RAM, both systems are running off of 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX, which I have running at 3000 megahertz. So no variance there as far as the RAM is concerned, but obviously other than that, the test systems are a bit different. I'm running on an Asus Pro board, Asus X99A board, I should say, in my X99 system, while the i7-6800K is in one of the Gigabyte Gaming 5 boards. So can't really do too much about that, but we tried to keep everything as close as possible. Otherwise, the 1080 Ti that I tested was the Founders Edition card, and I kept that at its stock out-of-the-box settings, with the only exception being to push the power limit slider up to 120% that we can get so that we can get the full benefit of GPU boost. And regarding GPU boost, it did seem to be running a little bit better on the 1800X, which is likely coming down to the temperature, which was also considerably lower than the 6800K, despite being the same card with the same fan curve in MSI Afterburner, and both of the chassis were tested with the door off of the side of the case, so I'm really not sure why the 6800K build was running a fair bit warmer than the 1800X build. And our testing in both systems was done on the latest drivers from NVIDIA, that's 378.92, so nothing changed there as far as the driver is concerned, really just two different systems here, and I thought this would be a good matchup to look at considering that the 6800K being an X99 part, which is, you know, geared, geared towards more enthusiasts that are looking to do multi-core workloads like video editing, Photoshop, CAD, things of that nature... And the 1800X is also kind of geared towards that. I unfortunately don't have a 6900K. I would love to test the 6900K up against my 1800X, but I just unfortunately don't have one. And I'm not going to go out and spend $1,000 on a processor that is uh, objectively slower than the 1800X when it comes to my particular um, you know, use cases. And you can get an 1800X for half the price. So there's really not much reason to get those higher end 6000 series X99 processors from Intel right now. Ryzen 7 is really just kicking their ass when it comes to doing multi-threaded workloads. But gaming can be a different story. So that's something I wanted to visit here with this 1080 Ti testing. So we're going to go through all of the numbers now here. And all of our games were tested on the Ultra presets at all the resolutions for 1080, 1440p, and 4K. But let's not waste any more time here, guys. Let's jump into the averages and the minimums here. And we will start off at 1080p, which had numbers that were a lot closer, honestly, than I had thought they would be going into this testing. I thought the 6800K would have pulled up a much more commanding lead than it did here in 1080p testing while I expected the gap to narrow at 1440 and 4k which we will see in just a moment but at 1080p the 1800x is still throwing some punches in there actually even taking a few titles for itself with Rainbow Six Siege, Sniper Elite 4 and Overwatch but all of these games are very close I mean Ghost Recon Wildlands 69 to 68 with a win for the 6800k but kind of in the margin of error there there are some titles like Watch Dogs 2, GTA 5 Sandy Shores where the 6800k does pull ahead a bit more than in other titles, but in these other ones like Battlefield 1, Mass Effect Andromeda, um, The Division, uh, Witcher 3, we're seeing very, very close numbers here to the point where most people, if they go out and pick up an 1800X, they're probably not going to be able to notice that difference. But if they are looking to do multi-core workloads, then they certainly would see a huge difference in that regard. And that's really what this, these, both of these processors are definitely geared towards that. They're geared towards people that are wanting to do the types of tasks that I mentioned earlier, but also maybe doing some gaming on the side. So the, hopefully this will kind of illustrate that for you guys. We can also go here into the minimums 
at 1080p where we see a very similar picture. We could see, you know, pretty much within the margin of error on a couple of titles here, like Rainbow Six Siege. Battlefield 1 is pretty close there, 8 FPS difference. Overwatch actually a victory here for the Ryzen 1800X, so, uh, and also The Division, another victory there, Ghost Recon Wildlands, a virtual tie there with a 1 FPS difference, so, really no issues with the 1800X being able to push out a high number of frames at 1080p, but I think most people that are going to pick up an 1800X if they're doing it for professional workloads, they're probably going to be running higher resolution displays, that's just my theory on this, they're probably going to be running 1440, 4K, maybe even an ultra-wide display, and when you start to get into those higher resolutions, as you'll see here, the gap between these processors, which was already close to begin with with the 1080 Ti, gets even closer at 1440p here. We could see Rainbow Six Siege, like, a, you know, one FPS difference, and in that, the division, I consider that to basically be a tie. Ghost Recon Wildlands, again, only a one FPS difference. Sniper Elite 4 tying. Uh, Overwatch, the uh, 1800X is taking the lead here by 3 FPS, but, you know, both of these processors, neither one of them is struggling to the point where it's a CPU bottleneck where you would have to be concerned about game performance really in any way. And that continues in the minimums as well. The 1800X doesn't like fall behind the, the 6800K to the point where it makes any games unplayable. Uh, in fact, the opposite. They're pretty much neck and neck in, almost in a deadlock tie and then winning out even in a couple of games, uh, at least in the average. And then I think only in the division did they actually win out in the minimums here, and also Rainbow Six Siege by 1 FPS, but once again, that's kind of within the margin of error, and the story continues here over at 4K, where the gap narrows even more, where we could see Battlefield 1 is a victory for the 6800K, but we're seeing Ties and Mass Effect Andromeda, The Division, Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, Sniper Elite 4 and The Division, and Rainbow Six Siege, are, and Overwatch are pretty much deadlocked Ties with only a 1 FPS difference, and that is consistent across the board. Those numbers are almost identical between the 6800K and the 1800X to the point where it's no one's really going to be able to see a, a difference playing on either of these processors in the games that I tested here at as a higher resolution as 4K because you definitely start to see that performance gap narrowing between the two. So I hope that this was definitely informative for you guys out there that are thinking about picking up a 1080 Ti and pairing it with a Ryzen processor, which I would still really only advise people to do is if they want to do those multi-threaded workloads, video editing, streaming, CAD work, stuff along those lines. If you're looking to do that, then a Ryzen 7 is going to be a much better processor. And I th hope that this shows that if you want to, if you're wanting to do gaming on the side as well, even you know high resolution or high refresh rate gaming paired with a GTX 1080 Ti, then you're not going to be limited to the point that some might lead you, lead you to believe. Uh, if you were to get something like a 7700K, I think we would definitely see a different result here where that would beat out the 1800X by a larger margin than when the 1800X was falling behind here. But this is really geared towards the people that are looking at either choosing between a Ryzen 7 AM4 build or an Intel X99 system. That's really what I wanted to focus on here with these numbers because that is what 1800X and Ryzen 7 is targeting. So I thought this would be the fairest matchup between these two CPUs and using the GTX 1080 Ti. But you guys can always please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I know people are very opinionated when it comes to testing with Ryzen and a lot of people are going to have to be able to put their two cents in. <laughs> no pun intended, Jay. But um, yeah, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. That's why I love doing these videos is so that we can have an open discussion and get feedback from you guys on what you want to see um, you know, either refined for the future or different testing entirely. That's where I get a lot of my ideas for these showdowns is from you guys in the comments. A lot of people have requested this, the 1080 Ti and Ryzen. So that is why I did it for you here today. So please, if you've got any ideas or something, a specific configuration you want to see tested in the near future, especially with Ryzen 5, I'm going to be doing a lot of testing on that. Once we do have those available, we can release all of our reviews to you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Please leave a like down below and subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys next time.